Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.1. macOS 15.1 Sequoia is available around the world at the same time for everyone. However, not all features are available everywhere, as this brings Apple intelligence. Apple Intelligence is available on M1, M2, M3, and the new M4 processor in the new iMac starting today. However, it's not available in every region around the world. So we'll cover not just Apple Intelligence, but other features as well. And this particular update is going to be fairly large. It came in at 6.73 gigabytes on my M2 MacBook Air 15 inch and can vary depending on device all the way up to about 12 or 13 gigabytes, depending on which version you're installing from. Now this was released alongside many other updates such as iOS 18.1, watchOS 11.1 and others as you can see here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll click on the Apple, go to about this Mac, and if we go to macOS Sequoia 15.1, you'll see the current build is 24883. So that lets you know you're on the latest version, and as far as the overall update goes, well let's first start with what we have as far as features that are not part of Apple Intelligence. The first one has to do with the battery if you're on a MacBook. So if you click on battery and maybe you're on low power mode. So if we go into maybe your battery settings here and we'll go into on battery. Now it's in low power mode. If we click this, we now have a new icon here. We can click it and disable it. So that's something they've updated, making it much faster to disable it from here. Also, if you have iPhone mirroring with your iPhone. So if we connect to the iPhone next to me here, we'll give it just a second to connect. You'll see it's connecting as it fills up. We had this in the last update, but now we can actually drag and drop between the iPhone and the Mac. So if we go into photos and within the photos app, you'll see here, this is the wallpaper from right now. We can drag and drop it to our desktop and it saves again. We can go the other direction and that's something they've updated. So it was a feature they promised early on that's now available. Now, Apple intelligence again is brought to many different devices. And as far as the overall support, well, it varies depending on where you live. This is the press release from today. If we scroll to the bottom and as far as Apple intelligence availability, well, the first set of Apple intelligence features is now available. And according to Apple, if you set your language to us English, you'll actually be able to try this out. So this is great news if you want to try it and you're in a region that's not technically supported just yet. However, Apple has also said they're going to confirm more regions starting in December. So they'll roll it out in December in English in Australia, Canada, Ireland, New Zealand, South Africa, and the UK. And then in April, an update will update it to allow for Chinese, English, India, English, Singapore, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, Vietnamese, and other languages. So that's when it's going to roll out according to Apple and hopefully they meet those dates. Now, as far as the first Apple intelligence feature, well, the first one really is writing tools or probably the biggest one. If we go into notes and within a note, you can see when I used in my iOS 18.1 is out what's new video where I just have some text that I've written and you'll see we have something that's misspelled. If I click this button at the top, we have writing tools. We can then use proofread to maybe go through and correct anything that's in here. Then it corrects it changes Apple intelligence shows us what it's changed by underlying it, underlining it. Then we can revert back. If we want, we can click the button again, have it rewritten in a friendly professional or concise manner, or even have it create bullet points with key points. So if we go to key points, you'll see it here takes a second and then creates a summary of what it's actually talking about. This is super helpful and you can do this throughout the whole OS. Any Apple app basically has this available. And again, you can go in here. You've got all of the typical updates you normally have where you can change things, but we also have transcriptions for recordings and notes. So if we go into this, you'll see there's a transcription here and we even have summaries for this depending on how long the note is. So in our transcription, we can see the note there, but then we'll have summaries based on what's in here and what's being said. So this is a super helpful feature. If you want to write something concisely, you can rewrite it, summarize it and much more. Now, one of the biggest changes people are seeing is the new Siri. Now you'll see the icon isn't any different here. It looks the same, but if we go into system settings here and we go to Apple intelligence and Siri, as long as it's enabled, you'll see it says it's downloading and some intelligence and Siri features may be unavailable. So it took a second to download and now you'll see the Siri icon in the upper right changed. So now if we use Siri, we can actually say, Hey, in front of it, or we have different shortcuts here. So we have 
the option to activate Siri using the globe and then S and we can just click it as well to activate. So that's something where we can say, what's the next F1 race, give it a second and it lets us know right here. How about after that? And it still does the same thing. So sometimes it works great. This is not Siri 2.0. This is just Siri that understands better context and has a new look to it. And when activating it, if I maybe hit command twice, it will activate. I get typed to Siri every time. I haven't seen it wrap around the screen. However, that should technically be available according to their notes. It has richer language understanding. It's got conversational context that helps maybe while you're typing, as I showed before, and it has product knowledge of how to change a wallpaper. And it should give us steps on how to do that. O open system settings, click on wallpaper, how to change brightness. And you'll see, you can maybe search for anything you want and it will give you information about that. Siri also sounds a little bit better this time around, a little bit more natural. Now, if we go into photos, there's some updates there. And within photos, search has been updated with better context. So maybe cars, you'll see it shows some cars in 2024, maybe. And there we go. It keeps the latest photo here that matches. So this does have to sort of index your library. It takes a while. So give it some time if you've just installed it. Something else we have new has to do with when you're editing a photo. So if we go into a photo and within a photo, here's one I took in Charlotte, North Carolina. If we tap edit, you'll see that we now have a new option for cleanup at the top. Click on cleanup. It may have to download it for just a moment. Once it's downloaded, you'll see it says click brush or circle what you want to remove. So maybe we'll circle this right here. See if it gets rid of it. That's a pretty poor circling of it, but it recognized what I was circling and it went away. So it did a pretty good job of getting rid of that in the photo, or you can reset it and bring everything back. If you want to get rid of something else, let's see if it can get rid of this tree here just by circling it. And I'm not sure this will work. And sometimes it doesn't, it depends what it is. Also, if it's a face, you can actually blur a face. So in this photo, if again, we go to edit and clean up, we can then just sort of scribble over my face here and then it will pixelate my face. So that's something you can do on anything. If there's people in the background, click it. And if it's highlighted, it's also suggesting something you may want to change. And if we go to memories on the side, you'll see the Apple intelligence icon. If I click on this, I should be able to create a memory according to the notes. However, you can do this on an iPhone and it's showing me my iPhone memories, but I can't create it here. I've looked all over for this and it's not giving me the option. So this is one I created for the iPhone and it's put to music and everything else. And you can edit it or see different photos within it. But unfortunately we don't have the option to actually create anything new here. I can create something on my iPhone and then it will sync over to the Mac. Let me know if you're seeing different options though, as well. One of my favorite features on this update is notification summaries. This is actually a screenshot right after setting it up where it says summarize notifications. You'll see, you can choose notifications to summarize. You can change this after, and it summarizes things with simple text that lets you know what it's seeing. So that's something I've been using, which works really great. And this is from someone that messaged me on Twitter. You'll see they messaged me 14 times and I just hadn't been able to get back to them just yet. And then it says inquiring about studio display, considering tilt and visa mount options impressed with the build quality. So it sort of summarizes what they were saying. And then I can go into that and answer it. And if you want to change those options, you can go into your notifications and you'll see different options here. So you have summarized previews on, you can turn them on for different apps if you'd like, or turn them off altogether. To go along with this, we have a new focus mode. So if we go to our focus modes here, you'll see I already have it. It's called reduce interruptions and it uses Apple intelligence. So it says intelligent breakthrough and silencing when reduce interruptions is active, intelligently allow important notifications to interrupt you and silence notifications determined not to be important. Any notifications specifically allowed or silenced will always be allowed or silenced. So that's something that's been updated so far. It's working well. You can also allow different people and apps to sort of get through this if you want to all the time. So that's a great little update and definitely something I would recommend trying out. Those summaries carry across to other apps as well, such as mail and within mail, we see, we have a summary here. 
So it actually shows a summary where they're talking about the email. And anytime you see this little icon, it's showing a summary. And if we go into an email, maybe reply to this, we also have smart replies. So as we type a new email, we will get some smart replies and it will suggest some things to type. And we also have our options for Apple intelligence at the top, where if we have a long email, we can proofread it, rewrite it more friendly. And just like we could all of the other things with key points, lists, and more all throughout the OS, those same smart replies work across the OS as well in messages. So you'll see in this message, someone said, awesome. Thank you. And then it says no problem or you're welcome. You can click on it. It goes in there and then you can send that as your message. So it's a nice little update. And if you have a bunch of messages from maybe a group, it can summarize that as well. Now, if we connect our AirPods pro two, there's an update here as well. So now they're connected. If we go to system settings, scroll down to the left, we've got our AirPods, and now we actually have the update we have on iOS 18.1 with hearing protection. So it can sort of minimize exposure to loud environmental noise across listening modes. They don't seem to show the overall hearing aid options here just yet, but they could show up if you have them set up on your iPhone. So you should be able to use your AirPods that way while you're connected to Mac, but it's not really something that you would use while using the Mac necessarily. So maybe that's why it's not in the main menu, but they have added those features and it does require AirPods version 7B19. There's also a new option if you're using a game and you want to install it to an external drive. If we go into the app store, click in the app store in the upper left, go to settings under settings. We have the option now to download and install large apps to a separate disc. So apps larger than one gigabyte will download and install to the disc you choose. So if they're over one gigabyte, you have an external drive connected. You can install them directly to that from the app store now. And within settings, if we go down to game center, now just like iOS 18.1, we can customize our profile. So you'll see, you can change your nickname. You can actually change the avatar here as well. Then if we scroll down, we have discoverability options to help friends find you. And then we can go into our gaming activity and select who we want to share this with. They've just renamed this. Also, if we go into contacts, and within contacts, if they have their game center profile listed here, you can send an invite to friend them directly from contacts. Now, as far as any other updates, well, Apple updates security every time they come out with a new version and you'll see the latest security updates here for Mac OS Sequoia 15.1. So if we scroll down, you'll see there's quite a few in this particular update from Apache to app support. If we continue to scroll down, there's pages and pages of security updates such as sandbox and shortcuts. For example, an impact or an app may be able to access sensitive user data in shortcuts. They fixed it where the issue was addressed with improved redaction of sensitive information. And then this is who actually reported it. And we have the CVE number. So lots of different security updates. So if you're wondering if you should install Mac OS 15.1, whether or not you're getting Apple intelligence just yet or not, I would highly recommend you install it just for the security updates alone. You will get some refinements and this is the first major update to refine everything across Mac OS. As far as the overall performance so far on this version, it seems to be okay. I've been using this MacBook Air M2 with it for quite a while. It seems to be pretty stable and overall battery life seems to be pretty good on standby mode. I haven't plugged this in at all for a few days. You'll see we're down to 55%. So it says it was last charged, well, three days ago or so on the 25th at 2:19 AM. So it's been a while it's been on standby. It was maybe up to about, well, 75% or so, but in general, it seems to be working just fine. I've had no issues whatsoever. Battery health on this is still at 100%. So this seems to be a pretty good update. Mac OS 15.2 should bring even more Apple intelligence features, maybe Genmoji and image playground, like it did on iOS 18.2. And maybe we'll even have something in between with Mac OS 15.1.1. But at this point, it seems like it's a pretty good update and we have additional features with Apple intelligence. Nothing really exciting outside of that though. If you found anything different or noticed anything working differently for you, or you've been able to try Apple intelligence, I'd love to hear how it's been for you in the comments below. And I'll link the iPhone version of this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.